a neurosurgery resident was waiting for us and he pulled up the MRI images. Nothing could have prepared us for what we saw when he pulled up those images. What led us to first suspect that something might be wrong was around the time she was two, two and a half, we noticed some issues with her vision. We would see her sitting on the floor playing with toys and once in a while she would drop things and she would look down to find them and she couldn't find them so she would kind of pat around with her hands. We thought that was a little bit odd. A parent at Lucy's daycare referred us over to pediatric ophthalmology at the university and all this time we thought worst case scenario, our two year old is gonna need glasses. So we went and saw Dr. Olson in pediatric ophthalmology, and Lucy's vision was normal, but he understood what we were saying, that there was something not quite right. The first test that he suggested was an MRI. After Lucy got back from the MRI, there was a nurse. I'll never forget the look on her face. We both could tell that she knew something that we didn't know. They said we were going to have to go back over to the eye exam area and talk to a neurosurgeon. As the images came up, we saw a massive, almost softball-sized tumor in our little girl's brain. When we saw those images, we were just shocked and followed by just a feeling of devastation and fear. The neurosurgery resident, he said we would be meeting with an oncologist next. And I thought, why is she meeting with an oncologist? And the resident said, you're meeting with oncology because nothing that big in someone so small could not be cancer. The surgery was 12 hours. It was an extremely difficult surgery, extremely dangerous surgery. There was a chance that she wouldn't, she wouldn't make it. But he had told us after the surgery that they had replaced every ounce of her blood in her body two times. She had lost so much blood that she had a stroke during surgery and when she came out, her entire right side was paralyzed. When her neurosurgeon came out to talk with us, he said, this tumor is not what I thought it was. He had never seen this type of tumor in 40 years of surgery. We found out that there was only a handful of children in the world with a similar type of tumor and none of them as big as hers. The neurosurgeon actually told us it was so big that it was pressing down on her optic nerve and that was what was causing her vision issues. During the surgery, her doctors were able to remove as much as they could of the tumor, but because it was growing through some main blood vessels, they weren't able to remove quite a bit of it. We had learned that Lucy had an atypical meningioma, and it was atypical in that this type of cancer usually isn't seen in children, it usually happens to adults, and it's also known to be not very aggressive type of cancer, but Lucy's obviously was extremely aggressive. There was no protocol for treating Lucy's type of tumor, so her doctors started calling other doctors and hospitals across the country, trying to come up with a plan for her. She went through two and a half years of chemotherapy, as well as two years of twice daily injections of a hormone that would inhibit the growth of the tumor. During that time, she was also in constant physical and occupational therapy, learning how to stand, how to walk, and how to crawl. Through her surgery and her chemotherapy, we were able to manage her brain tumor until she got to be about six years old. She had her second brain surgery, and we were so scared to have her go back into that surgery because of all the risks involved, but her neurosurgeons did an amazing job. They were able to take out a significant amount of the tumor, and so what was left would be treated with radiation. Even though it's been eight years since Lucy's first surgery, she's still recovering and she will have side effects from her surgeries and treatments for the rest of her life. We've been so thankful to live so close to a world-class children's hospital where Lucy has access to all the specialists she needs. Over the years, she's been seen by over a dozen departments at the university and is still followed by most of them. This hospital is like, creative, peaceful, colorful, mindful. Thank you for all that you've done for me and over the past few years, and thank you for helping me. For the past four years, her tumors remain stable, and we're hopeful that it will remain stable for the rest of her life. She's so happy and joyful, and she literally wakes up every morning with a smile on her face and it's like she has this innate appreciation for life that only a true survivor could have.